Can't you be a little more quiet? How are we gonna catch anything? You clodding around out here. Do you hear that? I heard something. Do you see it? Wind, maybe. Maybe. Uh, it's nothing. Hey, give me a beer. I don't know why I take you on these trips anyway. You chase all the game away. I ain't no louder than you. What was that? Nothing, Red. I didn't mean nothing by it. You're getting as bad as my wife. Maybe you need an attitude adjustment. <clears throat> oh, this beer runs right through me. Tonight you're back on a fleeing road where all the promises you wrote are empty and you're walking away and every piece of past that you steal like the fading dreams you hold so dear are empty when you're walking Dolores, I was just about to call you. Oh, we can't thank you enough for letting us use the cabin. Oh, don't mention it. Nobody's been up there for years. Glad I got a hold of you before you lost reception. Oh, actually, no cell phones is part of the charm for me and Jack. A week with nobody to talk to but each other could do us some good. There isn't proper electricity for the cabin, but there is a little generator. Might need to get some gas. There's a country store not far from the cabin. Good to know. 
with me is it okay i will invite if he wants oh, great mm. well who do we have here this is larry oh, boys such a fine looking dog <coughs> who are the lucky owners of such a fine animal oh sorry i'm virginia pleasure to meet you and this is my husband jack i'm john nice to meet you now that we have the pleasantries out of the way what can i help you with well, actually, we're only going to get a couple of things today, but we're going to be staying in the area, so I wanted to see what you have in stock. Not just passing through. We have a cabin. Actually, it's not too far from here. Uh, it belongs to my uncle, Rand Marston. Marston place, huh? Good old Rand. Oh, I miss having him around. We used to go hunting. Oh. The Lord's still upright? She was a lucky back in the day. <laughs> yeah. She's still kicking. She lives in Florida now. Good for her. No more snow. Their place is pretty isolated. You might want to keep an eye on Larry here. A lot of folks have been losing their pets here about livestock too. I don't know. Just keep an eye on him until he gets used to his surroundings at all. Thank you, I will. We take care of each other, don't we, baby? You probably already figured. There's no cell phone reception for miles. But we have a landline in the back if you need it. That's so sweet of you. You like meat? Yeah. It's fresh. One of the boys just slaughtered it the other night. Right, anyway. Excuse me? That's what I thought. Let's just get out of here. Speaking of which, what kind of dog food do you have in stock? We keep the dry in the back, and the uh, cans are on the shelves over there. Take the dry. Make yourself useful. It's right back here. Hey, hey, hey. Come on, hold up, hold up. Wait, 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 wait. What? I'm on vacation. I'm just trying to relax here. Oh, by starting a fight? I was just taking in the scenery, the trees, the mountains, the nice bud. Yeah. You got to admit, it was a nice bud. Okay, it was a great bud. But you know what? There are like three people for 100 miles, and you leer at one and start a fight with another. Sorry, baby. I'm just an animal. <laughs> nuts. Oh, here, let me get that for you. Oh, gentlemen, here we are. <laughs> Load up. someone? No, and I didn't pick a fight. I saw the way he was glaring at you. What happened? There was never going to be any fight. He got insecure all of a sudden. It's an alpha male thing. Fights only happen when it isn't clear who that is. Oh, I see, and it's usually you. It just seems to happen a lot more to you than to anybody else. No, it happens every time two men meet. Just a little more subtle, normally. Really? Sure. Maybe not a fight, but dominance is clearly established every single time. Let's go of the handshake first. Who looks away during a conversation? 
Who stands up straighter when a new guy enters the room? Same game, different rules. Really, the guys that duke it out are being a lot more honest about it. Well, there's nobody for you to fight with for miles around, except me. Now, that's something I am afraid of. Come on. We're supposed to be better about this. Maybe this trip into the woods is exactly what we need to get back on track. Thank you for agreeing to come with me. It means a lot to me. Sure thing. Hey, look. Oh, Jack. It's perfect. Come on. Come on. Come on. You gotta come on. It's terrific. I thought you said you'd been here before. Yeah, well, when I was a kid, but back then it was all about swimming and cookouts. I barely stepped foot in the house. Yeah, a little cleaning. It's going to be great. There's a cute little stove. Hey, look. This week's paying off already. Oh, yeah, that's Uncle Rand. He used to have jars of coins laying around everywhere. You should check it. There might be some old coins in there. You're right. There's a silver dollar. I told you. I'll have to get that to Aunt Dolores. Why? Because they're hers. This is Uncle Rand's place, so everything in it belonged to him, now it belongs to her. Yeah, of course. I, I just, uh, didn't want to have to see Aunt Dolores, you know? Just found the bedroom. Oh, did you now? Mm -hmm. Well, it just so happens that I just read in this magazine from when I was 10 years old <laughs> that the bedroom can still be the sexiest room in the house. Is that a fact? Oh, yes, it is. Right next to kitchen countertops and hot tubs. Since we'll be eating here, I'd like to think that Aunt Dolores never read that magazine. <laughs> Good point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Where's Larry? What? Larry! He can fend for himself. No! Jack, that guy at the store said that there are a lot of wild animals here. And why wouldn't there be? There's a lot of wild animals in here, too. Oh, come on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -mm. No, Dad, come on. Five minutes. <laughs> Five minutes. I know you. Five minutes turns into more. Come on, Larry. Huge. Do you think it's a bear? What am I, a botanist? Well, the smaller ones could be Leary.
think this is the last of it. Hand me the little red bag. I'm gonna get the candles out. You hungry? I'm starving. Great. I want to get supper done before we lose light. There's no lights? Well, until we get the generator started, it's candles. It'll be kind of fun roughing it. We'll have a nice romantic candlelit dinner. I'm gonna check on the generator. You never know when we might need it. I have to put some more gas in the Jenny. Jenny. <laughs> you didn't fill it up? I, uh, I just started it to see if it worked. I'm running out in a minute. Mm. Thank you. So, what do you think those other tracks were by the lake? I don't know. Mountain lion? Could be a bear. Bears have claws. Probably a cougar. <gasps> That'd be so cool to see. <laughs> but I'm, I'm worried about Larry. I'd be more worried about the cougar. That dog weighs almost as much as me. I don't know. Maybe this wasn't such a good idea. Come on. We just got here. Give it a chance. We're just so remote. Ooh. Oh, good thing you did the candles. Like you said, give it a try. I don't know. It's just kind of creepy. The whole no cell phone thing makes me feel naked. Naked. <laughs> Jack. I'm sure you'll be fine after a couple of days. Besides, you got me to protect you. That's all I've ever wanted. Someone to make me feel safe and that I can take care of.
on me. I woke up and you weren't in bed. Mm. Why'd you get all dressed? I'm gonna go check the Jenny again. Mm. Gotta stay hydrated. Oh, this country life, you're really loving it, huh? Is that what the kids call it these days? <laughs> We gotta get you to a doctor. Come on. Where were you? I got lost. Where were you? I got lost. All right. It was dark. I, I ran outside. It was. It was. I was looking for a stick or something to fight it with, and, and, and it was just so dark. I got lost. That doesn't make any sense. Why would you go outside? I, I ran to the car to get a jackhammer or, or a flare. You know, it bit me, and I wanted to kill it. So then you just waited outside till it left on its own? No! I... It was dark! I got lost! Where are you going? Back to the general store. Maybe that big guy there knows where the nearest hospital is. And fucking stop screaming at me! What's it's matter? my husband. He's been attacked. Please, he's hurt. Attacked? Yes, please! A doctor! Right, right. I'll get him right away. Thank you. It's not that bad, really. Get back in the car. I'm taking you to a doctor. It's really not that bad. Jack, don't. I called the doctor. He's on his way over here. See? You kids might get lost trying to find his place. Lord, look at you. You got chewed up pretty good. What was it? I don't know. I was big. I think it's you, but it was dark. Well, come inside and lie down. I got a place in the back where I take naps when business is slow. You have slow days? <laughs> You'd be surprised. Come in. Dr. Howard. Howdy. Ah. You must be the patient. I'm Zach. Pumping strong. That's a good sign. Oh, is that a dog? No, no, it was uh something bigger. I'm not, I'm not quite sure. It was uh, really dark. Okay, well let's get you cleaned up and see what we're looking at. It's an awful lot of blood. But your color's good. I don't think we hit any main arteries. When did you say this happened? A, a couple hours ago. Uh-huh. Is it wrong? No, no, not at all. In fact, it's healing quite nicely. But I'm still gonna have to uh, keep an eye on you for infection and rabies. Rabies? Yeah, you can't rule it out. In fact, that might be the reason why a wild animal's gonna up and attack you. I typically try to avoid people. 
You sure this wasn't a dog? Oh my goodness, Larry. Who's Larry? My dog. Jack, we gotta go back and find him. Sweetheart, I knew you loved that dog, but I am not He's going back to the He's out there. Cabin. He could be hurt. I'm not going back out there. He's my dog. I've had him longer than I've had you. Okay? He saved my life. I, I told you I got lost. Oh, you Excuse got mixed me. up with all the other cabins out there. Excuse no, I, me. I went out looking for a weapon. We were in the kitchen with all the knives. Excuse me. What? what? You said that the dog attacked the animal that attacked you, right? Yes. Okay, so if you can find your dog, then we can observe him. And Jack here doesn't have to go through all the rabies treatments. Unless it's absolutely necessary. Otherwise, I say we get you started on the meds right now. Jack, it's my Larry. Please. Okay, we'll finish up here and then we'll go back to the cabin and look for Larry. We all done? Uh, just a few little things. Let's get a jump start on an infection. There's some antibiotics and a little something for the pain. You want to wait outside for a second? Sure. I just, we really appreciate you coming out here, getting you out of bed. I'm sorry. Don't even mention it. It's the life of a country doc, you know? Uh, well, we're, we're all done then? Yeah, you mind if I get a quick minute? Well, listen, life for you is about to change, okay? You're going to start feeling some weird things going on. Things going on. Okay. okay, okay. What was that all about? I don't know. He's trying to get me into some cult or something. Let's get out of here. Check in the house. Okay. Here, boy. Larry. 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 He's not here. What are we going to do? I don't know. We can put some food out. I should board up the windows. I saw some planks outside. I'll see if I can find some nails. Could you, um, could you grab me some bacon first? Thanks, babe. He's gonna come home soon. Thanks. While well, I'm at it, maybe I'll make some eggs. Now you're talking. <laughs> I would have thought when we were at the store to ask if we could put up a sign or something that said if you see a stray dog. Yeah, because the people here, they'd eat them. Nice. You're so insensitive. You can see that I'm upset. I'm sorry. You're right. It was just a joke. An insensitive one. Not to mention judgmental and superior. Jesus, it was just a joke. And I am superior. Have you looked at these backwood hicks? The way they live out here? This is no use for a life. You know, you make these sweeping generalizations that anyone who isn't living their lives just the way that you think they should be is wasting their life. We need to go back to the store anyways. We're out of ice. Is there anything else we need? Is there anything else they have? Oh, okay, great. Because you would know that if you would have been checking out what was on the shelves instead of checking out that girl's ass. You're impossible. Jack? Oh, good. You're up. Yeah. What time was it? Lunchtime. How do you want your steak? Oh, wow. I must have been really tired. It's been an intense couple of days. Yeah. I'll go set the table. Oh, 
And well done, please. Any veggies? No. Okay. Oh, I guess I was hungry. You're not eating. I had a little something earlier. Oh, well, you know what? I can put this out on the porch and maybe Larry will smell it and help him find his way home. Larry. Larry! What do we do now? I don't know. How's your arm? Itches. You know, that door over there doesn't close all the way and scares me. Could you try to do something about that while I do the dishes? Are you okay? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm just hungry. Okay. That makes sense. You didn't have any lunch. No. No, I didn't. Like you might get some burgers. Great. Rare. Okay? Please. Okay. I'm sure that he'll be able to find his way home if he's not too hurt. I'm just worried that he won't be able to, you know? Larry? Yes, Larry. He'll be fine. I'm sure he'll be home any minute. I hope so. It's just that fight was so vicious. You saw the kitchen. And my arm? Yes, and your arm. I'm sure he'll be fine. But what if he's not? You know, we should be out there looking for him. No. No. He can follow his nose. Right? We should be here for when he gets back home. I guess you're right. It's just this as long as he's ever been away. Would you stop talking about the damn dog? He saved my life. I saved your life. No, you ran out the door. I went out for a weapon. Oh, you mean like a chair or a sharp pointy thing? It was dark. I'm out of here. What? I'm gonna go out for some fresh air and look for 
for Larry. I'll come with you. No. You just stay here for when he comes back. Larry! Larry! Let me help you. My husband Jackie has the car right now, but he'll be back any minute. We'll get you some help. What's your name? That's okay. That's okay. Don't worry. It's gonna be okay. Oh, come on, Jack. Where are you when I need you? What was that? See? I told you there was some wildlife out here. Cool. Did you bring your dad's gun? No. But it's dark and we have a fire. Probably stay a million miles from us right now. Besides, we got all the wildlife we need right here.
it easy. It doesn't seem to be life-threatening because you're breathing fine, so just um, try a rest. Mm -hmm. Are you hurt? I'm okay. I, uh, I wrecked our car. You're bleeding. Uh, Are you sure you're okay? I think I hit my head on the steering wheel. That medication that the whack doctor gave me. I'm gonna sue him. Well, let's just clean you up and see if he needs stitches. Are you hurt? No. Um, that was the naked guy. Excuse me? There was this guy. He had a really bad neck wound. He was stark naked. And you let him in the house? Jack, he was so badly hurt he could barely stand. He was probably attacked by the same thing that mauled you. Are you sure you're not just dreaming this up? You were asleep when I came in here. Where'd that blood come from? Okay? He was here. I was gonna take him to the doctor when you got back. And where is he now? I don't know. Are you sure you didn't see somebody? Um, pretty sure a naked guy would have caught my attention. Yeah. I don't know, maybe he was so delirious that he wandered off. I mean, he lost a lot of blood. Speaking of blood loss. Oh, sweetheart, I'm so sorry. Come on, let's get you upstairs, get you to bed. Take your shoes off. Let's get cozy. Well, it doesn't look like you need any stitches. There aren't many cuts. I think this blood might be from your arm. Oh, it's healing nicely. It doesn't look bad at all. Jack, you just had an accident. I'm fine. You might have a concussion. Well, you should examine my head. Larry! Where have you been, boy? Mama was so worried about you. It looks like he's okay. Good boy. Where have you been? He's okay. Yeah, Larry. Great to see you. Hey, now he's back, I don't have to get the rabies shots. Oh, and we can leave this miserable cabin. Hey, we were just in the middle of something. Oh, are you serious, Jack? This has been a disaster. But we were going to... Oh, yeah. Since we've been here, we've been attacked by a wild animal. You wrecked the car. We've wrecked up, I don't know how much, in medical bills. Now we have to deal with vet costs. Not to mention the naked guy. Yeah. Tell me again. 
Why was he naked? Oh, he didn't say. We came here for a calm weekend to work on ourselves. This has been anything but calm. Yeah, I'll grant you that. Yeah, and besides that, I was really hurt. You know, he could be out there roaming into a lake and getting drowned. We should call the police or the forest ranger or something. Wait, your aunt owns this property, and we are in residence. Does that make us liable at all? You would think of that. Okay. It's a fair point. All the more reason why we should get out of here. Yeah, I guess so. Wait, we can't. I wrecked the car. No, Jack. What are we gonna do? Hey, it's okay. When I'm here, I'm gonna take care of everything. I guess we should start walking. Wait, what? No. We should get a good night's sleep. That way we can get up in the morning and we can see if the car's even drivable. Plus. I'm ravenous. Well, then I forgot about that. I should get you something to eat. Huh? I'll go make something. Good boy. I don't want any more surprises today. <clears throat> yeah. I got a surprise for you later. Cockblock. Seriously? Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> Jack? Jack? Be right there. Okay, should we go? We have to. Jack, snap out of it. We gotta call the police and tell them about the naked guy. We gotta get our car fixed. There are things we have to do. We don't have a cell phone signal. We have jobs. This could take a week to sort out. I know. I know what I was thinking. It's just... It's just so nice out here. What? You didn't even want to come out here in the first place. After all this has happened, what are you talking about? I know. I just feel so relaxed now. At home. You've certainly changed your tune. Larry, let's go, baby. <laughs> put his collar and leash on. I don't want him running off every time he sees a squirrel. I don't want to put his leash on. His neck's been through so much stress. Hey, you baby him too much. Well, someone's got to. Come on, baby. Let's go. Here it is. Well, you didn't get very far. We've only been walking for a little bit. We should sue that country doctor. There was no do not operate heavy machinery warnings or anything. Pretty sure I passed out at the wheel. Wow, you really did a number on it. Surprised you didn't get hurt. I don't know. I just think the bumper's damaged. I don't think the frame. I think the frame of the car is still intact. I don't know, Jack. There's a lot of stuff leaking, and it smells like gas. Do you think that's safe? We won't know unless we try, and I'm willing to take the risk. It was worth a try. Did you really mean what you said about it feeling like home here? Yeah. I really like it here. Yeah, it's very peaceful. Peaceful? Oh, yeah. Trees and stuff. <laughs> well, what did you mean? Wild. Not wild, crazy, but wild, like, natural. I can really be myself here. 
I guess that's true. There are very few people to give you a hard time. Larry! I told you this would happen. Anybody? Hello? We need a ride. No keys. It's locked. Larry! 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 Here, boy. Larry. Hey. It's a mess, Jeff. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stay back. Hold it right there. Just hold it. Right, it's really bloody, but there's nobody home. Looks like it could have been some animals, uh, possibly a bear. Or what attacked us. Oh, Jack, the naked guy. This is probably where he was camping. We gotta get to a phone. Maybe his keys are in the tent. Oh, oh, oh. Christ, for crap's sake, Larry! Larry, wait! Larry! <gasps> what the hell is going on? How should I know? We need to call the police. There's still no signal. Larry, please wait. Larry, come here, boy. Come here, people. Jack. It's not what you think. Stay away from me. Sweetheart, it's not what it looks like. This is your shirt! Stay away from me! You don't understand. It's wonderful. You're insane. I can't explain. I... No! <laughs> That's what you can do with opposable thumbs. Ms. Lupo? Ms. Lupo, I'm a friend of Dr. Howard. She asked me to come check on you. Dr. Howard? Wait! Please! Don't go! Please! Please! I'm Ms. Lupo. Where's your car? Yeah, I just live down the road. No, we gotta get out of here. No, ma'am. Just calm down. Everything's gonna... No, no, no! I won't calm down. My husband's out there. He's gone... Crazy, and he's gonna be back here any second. Actually, I do understand, and that's why I came to speak with you and your husband. Everything's gonna be okay. I promise. But if I come in, okay, just close the door. He did this. I did this. 
But he's the one that went crazy. Yes. Miss Lupo, were you bitten as well? No. Uh, my Larry, he scared off whatever it was that was trying to attack us. Larry's a dog? Yeah. How'd you know? I just thought. Well, it's actually my husband, Jack. He's gone completely crazy. I think he killed somebody. Has he ever killed anyone before? No, of course not. Then let's not jump to conclusions. Oh, yeah, sure, that makes it all better. Actually, it does. Because I'm going to wait right here with you for Jack to come back. And then I'm going to have a little chat with him. And I guarantee you, nothing bad can happen to you while I'm here. Got a witness. That doesn't matter. Jack is going crazy. He doesn't want to chat. He's in full rage mode. I've known him for 20 years, and he's never acted this way. Simple, please. Would you mind if I had a cup of coffee? What? I just... It's been a long night. I could really use a cup of coffee. Sure. Randy's cousin? Randy's niece, am I right? Yeah. How'd you know that? Oh, did Doc Howard tell you? Right, small town. Everybody's got their noses up each other's business, you know? No, I knew your uncle really well. Good man, he's a good neighbor, and that counts for a lot out here. I was with him when he passed. It's tragic. I didn't know that. It was a hunting accident, right? Yeah. Well, pretty much. Yeah, Aunt Dolores, she was letting us have the cabin for a week. Jack and I were supposed to be working on our marital issues. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. It turned out to be a total disaster. I mean, look at the place. I don't know how we're going to pay Aunt Dolores back. When you asked me if Jack had ever killed anyone, were you serious? Well, you gotta understand that um, you're not in the city anymore. I mean, you live a little closer to the land out of here. I guess being livestock people gives us more of a sanguine view of death. Animals die, people die, you know? Sometimes it's okay, sometimes it isn't. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. Jack, he's always had a temper. That's actually how we met. Really? Yeah, um, right after college. I was at this bar, and this guy, a total creep, he was hitting on me. And I was trying to let him know, like, I'm not interested. And then he raised his hand up like he was gonna hit me. Well, that ain't any kind of man. There's more. When he raised his hand up, another hand grabbed his and turned him around. And then he looked at me, and that was Jack. And he said, is this guy bothering you? Hmm. And while he was looking at me, the guy sucker punched him. Jack didn't move. He kept eye contact for a second. And then he snapped and just beat the crap out of the guy. Really? <laughs> but I bet he didn't kill him. No. But in retrospect, it just kind of scares me. The guy hit the ground and didn't see it coming. Well, there's a difference between having a bad temper and uh, killing someone, you know. <laughs> that takes a different kind of man. Uh, Jack let him go. Am I right? Yeah. I guess I was real impressed. I gave him my number. So him sticking up for you, that, uh, that attracted you to him? Well, I went home with him. 
and we've been together ever since. Well, isn't that a beautiful story? <laughs> the point is that Jack, he's not afraid of a fight. Well, all it takes is one primal event like that to rip the civilization right out of you. And then you see who the man really is underneath. And some people, you know, they can keep it buried their entire lives. And some of us just, uh, just don't have that choice. What are you getting at? I'm just talking about the duality of the world. Chinese call it yin and yang. Western psychology, they call it masculine and uh, feminine. But the Native Americans that lived right here, they called it the spirit brother. I'm just talking about the animal nature that lives in all of us. Probably what's happening is Jack's getting in touch with his uh, spirit brother for the first time. That's something we can't do back home. It's funny, he said something similar to that. He said that out here he felt like he could be free and be himself. Well, there you have it. You know, I see that you're both crazy. Jack can't hold anything back. I mean, he went nuts. I think he killed someone. Are you gonna help me get out of here or not? Do you have any evidence at all that he killed somebody? You have something to tell me? About two miles from here, there's a dead woman. And her body's all mangled up like an animal attack. And I found Jack's shirt beside her. Well, that changes things, might. Virginia! Jack! Virginia! I'm gonna tell you, nothing bad can happen to you while I'm here. Okay, that's fine, but I'm gonna keep the knife. Virginia! I'm inside! Give us a second! Puss. this guy? Hey, Jack. My name is Reed. Reed Oliver. I'm a friend of Dr. Howard's. He sent me because he said you might need some help. You okay, sweetheart? Yeah, I was just a little shook up. Well, I have some things to uh, explain to the two of you. Lupo, your husband has received a gift, a great gift. Now, normally we have a whole month to explain and prepare, but this has been a bit unusual. You think? Virginia. You don't mind if I call you Virginia, do you? I'm speaking directly to you because uh, I don't have to explain myself to Jack. He knows exactly what I'm talking about. And as fantastic and crazy as it might sound, what attacked you a couple of nights ago is uh, what you might call a werewolf. Oh, he's crazy too. Wait, let's hear him out. So, there's a physical transformation. <laughs> oh, yeah. Something happened. And it's a wolf. My ancestors believed that the spirits of wolf and man were very closely united. I mean, when you think about it, we've been sharing the same hunting grounds for thousands of years. And the fact that wolves were domesticated at all well, kind of supports the idea that we've been kindred spirits since the beginning. So there's a physical change. Dr. Howard thinks the gift is a... Uh, Straight up disease. But I'm a little bit more on the metaphysical tip. 
I mean, all you have to do is witness the transformation firsthand under a big, beautiful moon. And you would probably think that something a little supernatural is going on. Where were you bitten? Jack. That was... It's gonna be okay. Is he dangerous? Well, that depends on his nature. If he's a good man, if he has a, uh, a peaceful soul, when the gift takes effect, he might sleep out on the porch at night, wag his tail, scratch some fleas, chase a squirrel. And what if he's ordinarily aggressive? Well, now we get to the matter of the dead girl you say you found. Say Jack here has some anger issues. What have you said to this guy? Oh, whoa, whoa. Relax, Jack. We've been here for hundreds of years. We know how to handle the occasional accident. But what I need to know is if you're going to be a danger to the pack. Our friends in law enforcement checked on you the moment that we suspected that you might have received the gift. Turns out you have a fair history of violence. I mean, nothing too severe. That is until you get into the sealed record. What? It was a long time ago. It was juvie, that's why it was sealed. There's really nothing to it. I can explain everything that happened, sweetheart. Well, you're gonna have to explain yourself to the pack. Because we can't exactly have a bloodbath every full moon now, can we? There's limits to how much we can cover up. What? I'm finally shedding the restrictions of a civilized life. And you want to add more on top of the other ones we already have? You are crazy. So why were we attacked? The Alpha Wolf might have sensed Jack as a threat. I mean, who knows? Maybe he caught something on the wind. Are you threatening me? I'll do whatever it takes to protect the pack, Jack. Sounds like a threat to me. <sighs> you arrogant little pup. I knew you were trouble. I smelled it all over John's store. That's you. What are you, the Alpha? What do you think? It's not your rules until they get in your way. That's right. And if you don't like it, we can wait till the moon rises and settle this the ancient way. Why wait? Every dog has its day. You left me no choice, babe. What? You heard him. He was gonna trot me out in front of some committee and have them put me down like a mad dog. And why would he think to do that? I can still fix this. I can bury the bodies and no one will ever know. But I need to know you're with me. It's gonna be dark soon. Sure, babe. Yeah. Mate for life, right? <laughs> Come on, sweetheart. You heard him, he had it coming. They were gonna put me down. You don't know that. The pack might have understood. They may have been in your favor. You heard him. He was gonna wait till the moon came up, and then he was gonna kill me when he had the advantage. And what about the dead girl? Okay, you got me there. Ah! 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 Jack, no. Please. For better, for worse, right? 
It's gonna get a lot worse. So Jack killed this guy, and then he, he panics, and he runs away, and he wrecked the car, and he died in the crash. The so police should buy that, right?
Well, hello. You're getting to be a regular around here. Yeah, we try to come out at least once a month. I like having the business and all, but I would have thought you would never want to see this part of the world again, least of all that cabin, after all that unpleasantness. Yeah, that's all behind me now. This place is actually pretty special to me now. I just met being up there all alone is so. all. <laughs> I'm not alone. What do you mean? I don't think you've met my little brother. This is James. He's the sheriff around here. Little brother. Hi, I'm Virginia. You were saying you're not alone. Yeah, Larry, my dog. He's in the car. Quite a lot of unpleasantness out your way, if you don't mind me saying so. Actually, I do. My husband died in that accident, and his friend Reed. Well, that's kind of what I was getting at. Mr. Oliver was uh, kind of a community leader around here. Were they friends? Jack had a lot of secrets from me. I only assumed they were friends because they drove off together. Some folks we miss more than others. Mr. Oliver may have been a leader in the community, but not a good one. Turns out he had a record and history of violence. I'm sorry for your loss, though. Thank you. Yeah. And you don't have to worry about any more unpleasantness with me and Larry just coming up every now and then. We just like the quiet. Well, that's all I needed to hear. 1350. Oh. I got some change. We look out for our own out here. Yeah. You know what? I'm gonna take these two. That's cool. Tell Larry you say hello. Thank you. I will. You're one of us now. See you next month. Thank you. Did you miss me? <laughs> I got you something. Look. I'm gonna teach you how to read. Yeah. 